Warning, the video you're about to watch contains mathematics at the level of college algebra and trigonometry. All material has an assumed prerequisite of both Algebra 1, which is elementary algebra, and Algebra 2, which is intermediate algebra. While some prerequisite topics are reviewed briefly, a more thorough review of these entrance topics can be found by searching the web. It's the system of equations. We must deal with them all at once. Always looking for solutions. Positive outlook. Hello, my name is Roy Simpson, professor of mathematics at Cosumnes River College in Sacramento, California. This is the fifth and final video for the law of signs for a trigonometry class. You should have already seen the video on the theorem for the law of signs and its proof. You should have also possibly watched the video on the conceptual investigation of the ambiguous case for the law of signs and also a longer video on how to use the law of signs to solve triangles. That's going to be kind of necessary here. And finally, I just had a video right before this for the area of a triangle. Uh, part one is what it was called. And that's going to be used in this uh, lecture here as well. But these are all the applications, not all of them, but the first part or first chunk of applications of non-right triangle trigonometry. This is part one because this part one requires only law of sines. Part two, which will be in a later video, will require law of cosines. Of the two laws, by the way, they're both equally weighted. They're both as important. It just turns out that law of cosines allows a little bit more flexibility, but cannot be used in the same cases as the law of sines. All right, that being said, let's go ahead and read this. The law of sines can be used in the NFL to determine the distance a kicker punts a football. The football is kicked from a point A to a point B, which is a total distance of X. Well, let me just showcase that. So somebody kicks a ball from point A to point B, a total distance that we don't know and we will just call X. Okay. Uh, the distance from the kicker to the observation booth. So remember the kicker was right here at point A. There's some observation booth C, um, and that distance we're gonna call B. Okay, so there's some observation booth. I'll just put it right here. There's some observation booth at C. And uh, let's see, the distance from the kicker to the observation booth is pre-measured. So this distance right here from the kicker to the observation booth is pre-measured. We're gonna call that length B because it's opposite the angle B in this triangle. An electronic device is then placed where the ball lands right here. Uh, which measures angles. Okay, so we're gonna complete this triangle here. Let me go ahead and just draw a line here. Uh, and uh, if B, side B, is 270 feet, and angle A, well, that's kind of nice, is 57 degrees. That's supposed to be a degree sign, it just got screwy. There we go. And angle B is 85.3 degrees. Go. That's angle B. I'll do a double angle for that. Find the punt punt length in yards. That's <laughs> something that I always throw into problems is a mixture of units. So everything here is in feet, and then the final answer has to be in yards. So that's just a heads up on that one. All right. So uh, first thing I'm going to do is boil this real world problem down to um, just a, a simple math problem for us. So notice it's a triangle and we're being asked to find uh, a length. Also notice it's not a right triangle. So law of signs can be used here possibly. Let's build a table. Uh, by the way, I do want to mention law of signs can be used on right triangles as well. A lot of people don't know that, but you can totally use law of signs on right, right triangles. If I have time at some point, I'll talk about it. All right, so let's see what they've given us. Angle A they've given us is 57 degrees. Angle B, they've given us is 85.3 degrees. I might as well just fill in angle C because it's just 180 minus 57 minus 85.3. And that would be 37.7 degrees. Not roughly, but exactly. I don't know if I'm going to need that, but I'm just filling that in. And then let's see, what else did they give us? They gave us side B is 270, but that's feet. I'm just going to write it in as feet. And what do we want? Uh, we want the side opposite angle 
C, so side C. That's what we want. So I'm going to use this completed row with the law of signs to find that missing side. Because we're finding a missing side, not a missing angle, there will not be an ambiguity here. Remember, law of signs, you only get that ambiguity if you're finding missing angles. Well, I should say you only have the possibility of ambiguity if you're finding missing angles. So let's see here. Side C is to the sine of its opposite angle, 37.7 degrees as side B, 270 feet, is to the sine of its opposite angle, 85.3 degrees. And solving for side C here, we have 270 sine of 37.7 degrees divided by the sine of 85.3. Again, that's in degrees. And whatever this answer is, it's going to be in feet. So we're going to divide that by three to get it into yards. I'm just saying that out loud because you're going to see me do it in my calculation. So here we are, 270 sine of 37.7 degrees and that, and divide that by sine of 85.3 degrees. That's how many feet it is. And I'm going to take that answer, ANS, and I'm going to divide it by three and I get 55.2 yards. There we go. We have the answer, 55.2 yards is how far the football was kicked. That was, long, that was the length of the punt. There you go. Let's do another problem here. Uh, and notice that I'm not, I don't give you a picture to begin with. I would like you to interpret and be able to build pictures like these. That's part of the logic or critical thinking skills we need to kind of build here. So you have a couple observers at points P and Q located on the side of a hill that is inclined at a 32 degree angle to the horizontal. Okay, that sentence alone requires me to think. So I, I have a horizontal and this hill is a 32 degree pitch. So I'm going to at least draw that. So there I'm just drawing in my 32 degree pitch right here. And that's 32 degrees from horizontal. So let me just write 32 degrees right there. And what else do we have in this problem that they told us? Uh, we have a couple people on the side of this hill. So somebody at point P and somebody at point Q. I don't know where they are located yet, so I'm not going to plot them. But it does say in the next sentence, the observer at P determines the angle of elevation to a hot air balloon to be 62 degrees. Simultaneously, the observer at Q measures the angle of elevation to the balloon to be 71 degrees. If P is 60 meters downhill from Q, find the distance from Q to the balloon. Well, I've read the problem. I've realized I'll probably need to move this down a little bit. So that's what I'm doing. I know that person P is 60 meters down the hill from Q. That's this sentence right here. So I'm going to go ahead and plot P and Q on this hill. I'll just put uh, P right here. doesn't actually matter where on the hill. And Q, I'll just say this is a distance of 60 meters here. So this distance is 60 from here to here. So they're 60 meters away from each other. Now, what else do I have? Um, the observer at P determines that the angle of elevation to the hot air balloon that's in the air there is 62 degrees. Angles of elevation, something you should have talked about with your instructor, are how we look. So if you're, if well, that's not gonna work if I don't draw it right. If you have an eyeball right here, that's an eyeball with some eyelashes, okay? And you look at the horizontal, the angle of elevation is this angle up. That's the angle of elevation. So if person at point P is looking horizontally, let me actually draw in a horizontal here just so that I have it. There we go. So person P looks horizontally and then up through an angle of, what was it? 62 degrees. So I'm going to go ahead and have person P look up through an angle of 62 degrees. Notice that 62 degree angle is from the horizontal, not from the hillside. So I'm going to draw a line here. And actually the line I'll draw is in green because I think that's just a better color. So there's my angle of 
62 degrees. And I'm drawing it kind of far because I don't know when it will collide with the vision of person at Q. The person at Q measures their angle of elevation, elevation to the hot air balloon. Oh, by the way, uh, 62 degrees. So this angle right here, that's a 62 degree angle. We're going to be erasing that in a moment, but I just want you to know that's the angle with which person P looked up through. Now, person Q is also going to look through an angle of elevation of 71 degrees. I'm just looking right here to look at the balloon that's in the air. So again, I'll go to person Q and I'll draw in a horizontal just so they could look horizontally momentarily. So they look horizontally and then look up through an angle of 71 degrees. So up through an angle of 71 degrees. And where are we? Right about there, 71 degrees. So I'll do this in, oh, I almost missed that, right? I'll do this in red. Okay. So obviously where these two lines meet will be the balloon. So the balloon is right here. All right, now I'm gonna fill in some other information here. And, oops, I meant to turn off my ruler. There we go. Now I'm gonna fill in some information. That angle that Q looked through was 71 degrees. That's given to us for a reason. Now when I draw anything in a application, I then redraw it later on. So I know I'm gonna redraw this because if I keep this picture and work with this picture, it's going to be an absolute mess by the time I'm done with it. So I, I just want to get some pertinent information off of this picture. First of all, that total angle in green right there is 62. But we were told this angle right here with the horizontal was 32 degrees. So therefore, the interior angle of this triangle this angle right here is 62 minus 32, which is 30 degrees. That's very helpful. Also, again, we were told this angle right here is 32 degrees. And notice it's like that beautiful pattern. And therefore the remaining piece of this angle is 71 minus 32. 71 minus 32 is like 72 minus 30, 40, 39 degrees. So 39 degrees, 60, 71, yes. Now, if that's 39 degrees, I hope you can see that you can find this angle right here because 39 degrees and this angle right here are supplementary. They're part of a straight angle. If you look, if this angle's 39 degrees, then, oops, didn't mean to erase that. Then the remaining angle is 180 minus 39. And 180 minus 39 is 141 degrees. So notice that you have to do a lot of extra little work in here when you do a, a real world problem. There's a lot of extra kind of critical thinking skills that come into play. But now that I have all of this done, I'll label, I'll actually, I will go ahead and redraw this triangle in a more manageable uh, space. So I have something like this. I'm not trying for accuracy anymore. What I'm trying for is space for me to work within. I know that this distance is 60. I know that this angle right here, which um, I'm going to label that vertex. That's fine. I'll label it Q and I'll label this vertex P um, and I'll label this vertex the balloon. We happen to know that angle P is 30 and angle Q is 141. And we want to know what side length little p is, because uh, that's the distance from Q to the balloon, which is exactly what they're asking for. So I'm gonna draw out a table. Uh, I have angles P, Q, and B, or you can call them A, B, and C, I really don't care. Angle P was 30 degrees. Angle Q was 141 degrees and angle B, we don't know. And actually we don't care. Side P, we don't know. And we do care. We want side P. Side Q, we don't know. 
And side uh, B, we do know, actually. Side B, the side opposite angle B, is 60. Well, I just said we don't care about angle B, but we actually do because we don't have a complete row here. And to use the law of sines, you need a complete row. But you can take 180 and subtract off 171, which is the sum of 141 and 30, to find out that our missing angle for B is 9 degrees. So I'm going to use blue there, 9 degrees. All right. And now that I have a full complete row... I'll use that row to find our missing side length P. Notice I'm not finding an angle with the law of sines, so there will not be an ambiguity. This will be just a straightforward computation, no need to check for a second uh, triangle or anything like that. So P is to the sine of its opposite angle, 30 degrees, as uh, let's see, B, which is 60, is to the sine of its opposite angle, which is 9 degrees. Now, we know what sine of 30 degrees is. It's a half. But the reality is we're going to grab a calculator no matter what. So I'm just going to write this as 60 sine of 30, even though I could have just said it's 30. But that's okay. Uh, over the sine of 9 degrees. And I will, rather than taking you over to Desmos, you already have seen several times in this video series how to use Desmos. I'm just going to do it on my calculator. 60 sine of 30 degrees divided by the sine of 9 degrees gives me 191.8. That's roughly 191.8. So I'm going to fill that in. Actually, I'll fill that in right here. This length is approximately 191.8. And what are the units for distance? Meters. So the balloon is 191.8 meters away from the person standing at Q. So most of your problems with uh, applied problems in trigonometry are really going to revolve around drawing a proper picture. Once you have a proper picture, it really is just using the information or using the techniques you've been taught. I personally love applications. They're one of my favorite parts of mathematics because you're using your mathematics. And so I like to give an extra dose of applications when I do application videos. So here, let's do another problem. A short wave radio antenna is supported by two guy wires, 165 feet and 180 feet long. Each wire is attached to the top of an antenna and anchored to the ground at two anchor points opposite the antenna's sides. The shorter wire makes an angle of 67 degrees with the ground. How far apart are the anchor points? Well, I've read the problem and I kind of understand what's going on, but it'd probably be better if I drew a picture. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So there's our horizontal. I'm assuming, by the way, this is on horizontal ground. Um, we have two antenna wires. Uh, the angle the short wire makes with the ground is going to be 67 degrees. So let me just drawn here a 67 degree angle 67 is pretty steep so there's our 67 degree angle right there just do it like that so that's uh, zooming in that's 67 degrees and that gets anchored to uh, an antenna a tower or an antenna or whatever you want i'll just draw that in red there we go now that's the shorter wire so the longer wire is probably going to make a steeper angle here or maybe i say should say a shallower angle but anyway, the longer wire is this guy. Okay. And let's see what else we got. Uh, turn off my ruler. I don't need that anymore. The shorter wire. Okay. Which is uh, the shorter wire makes an angle 67 degrees. So the shorter wire is this wire right here. That is going to be of length 165 feet. The longer wire is going to be 180 feet. Uh, da, 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 da. The uh, anchor points on our are on opposite sides of the antenna, so that's what I did here. Uh, let's see how far apart are the anchor points. So we want to find out what's this distance. So I'll go ahead and properly label this. I'll call this angle A, angle B, angle C. There's no rhyme or reason to how I I label those. Uh, this will be side C because it's opposite angle C. This will be side A, because it's opposite angle A, and this will be side B. So we want to know what is side B. And now you're back to just using the law of sines. 
just fill out a table. Angle A is equal to 67 degrees. Angle B, we don't know. Angle C, we don't know. Uh, side length A is 180. Now that we have a full row there, we know we can use law of sines. Side B is what we want. And whoops, my screen just went jagged. Side C is 165. And those are in feet. Now you can see there's a little work here. We're going to use this full row to help us find this angle. I'm writing that in red because when you find an angle in uh, using the law of sines, you have the possibility for ambiguity. In this case, you're not going to have to worry about that. And let me just tell you why before we jump into the problem. The ambiguity from the law of sines comes from the fact that you're using a sine inverse function to give you an angle. And the sine inverse only returns acute angles for application problems. So angles between zero and 90 degrees. But your angle might have been greater than 90 degrees. Well, not in this problem. There's no way they're gonna hook up a wire that goes 110 degrees in the wrong direction or something like that. So whatever answer we get from our law of signs here, the acute angle that we're about to get, that is our answer. We There's no way that you're gonna have an obtuse angle and a, a wire going out here and then strapping back. That's just not happening. So we are only gonna need the acute angle. So let's just go ahead, use our law of signs and not worry about the ambiguous possibility here because, well, there's no need to worry. Sine of angle C is to its side 165 as sine of angle A, 67 degrees, is to its side 180. This tells us that angle C is the arc sine. Notice that I, sw I switch notations every once in a while. The arc sine of 165 sine of 67 degrees divided by 180. And now I'm gonna just grab a calculator and compute this out. And actually this is one of those that I should use Desmos to show you. This is gonna be 57.5 degrees roughly. Yeah, that's rounded properly. But I actually should show you this in Desmos because we don't want just that answer. We want what side B is, which means we need to keep our answers exact. So let me go ahead and hop over to Desmos. And in Desmos here, we're gonna say that side C, or angle C, sorry, is equal to the arc sine of uh, 165 times the sine of whatever we had is 67, and that's divided by 180. Okay, so there's our 57.5 degrees. And remember, we needed to find side B. Well, this will allow us to find angle B, because angle B is 180, minus angle C, minus the given angle A, which was 67. That's just gonna help out. So I'm gonna quickly write those down. So you can see I've written that in here. I've written the values. Now I just need to find that side length B, because remember, that's what we're looking for, the distance between those anchor points. And that side length B, I will use the given uh, solid piece of information there, the given solid row. And I'll have to use that approximated value for my angle B. And that's why I saved that angle B in Desmos, uh, just because it saving that there uh, as uh, a value gives me a longer approximation, a better approximation than just a single decimal place. So B is to sine of angle B, which I'll use Desmos for, is the same as uh, that ratio is the same as 180 is to the sine of angle 67 degrees. Solving for B, I get B is 180 sine of angle B divided by the sine of 67 degrees. And then I'll just hop over to Desmos to finish this out. So here I am in Desmos, and we're going to just type in here 180 sine of... Uh, B divided by uh, sine of 67 degrees. That's 
written in, the, in there. And let's see, this is in feet. So 161.1 feet apart. That's what, that's the distance between those two anchor points. Not too bad. The final example here is to use the area form formula that we just learned. So the Bermuda Triangle is a region of the Atlantic Ocean that connects Bermuda, Florida, and Puerto Rico. Find the area of the Bermuda Triangle if the distance from Florida to Bermuda is 1,030 miles and the distance from Puerto Rico to Bermuda is 980 miles. And the angle created by the two distances is 62 degrees. Now, I am no geographer. So I do not know uh, the relationships between those three locations other than that um, Florida is to the north of both Puerto Rico and Bermuda. And I think that's true. So, uh, but that doesn't really matter because all I really truthfully need here, I'm just going to do it this way, is the distances and the angle. So the distance from Florida to Bermuda is 1,030 miles. And let's see, the distance from Puerto Rico to Bermuda uh, is 980 miles. There we go. That's supposed to be a 980. And the angle created by these two distances is 62 degrees. So I don't really need to know kind of the, like, if I've laid everything out properly. All I need to know is that the distances, the angle is in between those two distances. And now I can use my area formula, which is one half a b sine of theta where a and b are the sides that are um, containing that angle theta theta is inc the included angle between a and b so this will be one half 1030 980 sine of 62 degrees that'll be the area of the bermuda triangle and grabbing a calculator here I get approximately 445,624 square miles. I guess it's an area, it'd be miles squared, right? So that is the final application that I have in this lecture. Um, that's pretty good, actually. Quite a few applications in a short period of time. Uh, note that all the applications you're gonna deal with in trigonometry generally deal with angles in degrees. Most of the theoretical work you'll do in mathematics is done in radians. Uh, so be prepared to have to work in both worlds. It's the system of equations. We must deal with them all at once. Always looking for solutions. Positive outlook overcomes. Obstacles getting in our way comes. Effects more than we can sometimes see. Things for what they are and work together until you Listen close, don't talk too much, that isn't kosher. You may really hurt inside, it doesn't justify you to speak too loud and cry.